Right. Greetings, grade uh, nines. I hope you enjoyed your exam last week and uh, everyone was satisfied with their results. Remember, you can still do better, work hard. So we are going to start now on geometry. Particularly, we are going to be looking at all the other 2D shapes. So let's start with the properties of properties of straight lines, right? So let's uh, fix this. This is properties of straight line. Properties of straight line, right? Now, properties of straight lines, vertically opposite angles, right? Let's look at what are these vertically opposite angles. So vertically opposite angles are angles opposite each other when two lines are, uh, when two lines cross and these angles are equal. So when we've got two lines crossing like that, we can see that here we can put some lines to demarcate those. We've got this angle. Uh -huh. right. We've got this angle here is equal to this angle here. So with those are vertically opposite angles. And also we've got this angle being equal to that angle. So we can say the angle AEB is equal to angle CED and angle AED is equal to BEC because they are vertically opposite angles. Right, alternate angles, right? Which ones, well, what are these angles, right? When two lines are crossed by another line, right? When two lines that are parallel are crossed by another line called a transversal line, alternate interior angles are pair of angles on the inner side of each of these lines, two lines, but on opposite sides. So here, what we should have written when two lines, or we can say when two parallel lines, so remember this sign means parallel line. When two parallel lines are crossed by one line called transversal, right? Alternate angles are a pair of angles on the inner side of each of these two lines, but on the opposite side. So, right, what do we mean? So if we've got a diagram like that, you see that this one and that one are alternate angles. And also, not only those, you will see that also we've got this one and this other one they are all alternate angles. So we have got two pairs of alternate angles there. AGD, AGD will be equal to EDG because they are alternate angles. And also BDG will be equal to DGF because they are also alternate angles. Corresponding angles, what are they? These are angles which occupy the same relative position at each intersection where a straight line crosses two other parallel lines, right? So we have corresponding lines. When we've got parallel lines like AF and uh, ABE, and then we draw a transversal HC and corresponding angles, you see, if we've got this one and that one, they are corresponding angles. And also other poor corresponding angles, which we can see here, we can see this one and that one. So corresponding angles are equal, we're not done. Some more corresponding angles, you see, we've got this one and that one. They are also corresponding angles. And the last pair of corresponding angles, we've got this one being equal to that. So those are corresponding angles. So ADG, AGH is equals to BDG. Why? Because they are corresponding angles. And we've got AGD being equals to BDC, which is also corresponding angles. CDE being equals to DGF, corresponding angles. EDG equal to FGH, corresponding angles. Okay, moving on. 
core interior angles. What are they? So when parallel lines are intersected by a transversal line, core interior angles lie in the inside of parallel lines on the same side of the transversal. Core interior angles are supplementary. So if we have got core interior in a, a diagram like that, AF is parallel to BE and we've got our transversal HC. So you will see that corresponding angles, it's going to be that angle and this angle, right? These will be corresponding angles. And also we can have another core interior angle, sorry, core interior angles, that one and this one. So we can say angle ADG plus angle BDG will be equal to 180 degrees because they are core interior angles. So we say core interior angles are supplementary. Supplementary meaning that they add up to 180 degrees. Angle EDG plus angle DGF will be equal to 180 degrees. Why? Because it's core interior angles. You have to learn to write these reasons because you see that in your exercises, you cannot just say angle ADG is plus angle BDG is equal to 180 degrees and you leave it like that. No, you have to clothe it with a reason. Tell people that why do you say that is because they are core interior angles. When you write something in geometry, you have to make sure you accompany it with a reason. Complementary angles. So complementary angles, right, are angles, are two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. So when we've got a, this, a, this the diagram like this, you can see that complementary angles, it's going to be A, B, D, A, B, D, which is this one, plus a C, B, D, C, B, D, which is this angle, right, will add up to 90 degrees because we could so we write the reason because they are complementary angles. So complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. Now, supplementary angles. So two angles are supplementary when they add up to 180 degrees. So you must get used to this word. We can say that interior angles of a triangle are supplementary. Why? Because they add up to 90 degrees. So here two angles on a straight line, we can see that we can even increase the number of angles. As long as they add up to 180 degrees, we say that they are supplementary. So in this case, we can say the angle A, B, D, which is this one, and the angle A, C, B, C, B, D, which is this one, they are supplementary because they add up to 180 degrees. And then angles around a point. So angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. So if we have with our diagram there, we've got three angles. We've got ADB, which is this angle, plus the angle BDC. So the angle BDC is this angle, plus the angle ADC. ADC is this angle. They all add up to 360 degrees. So we say angles around a point. Right. Moving on, bisectors of angles. So a bisector of an angle, it's a line which cuts an angle into two equal parts. Right. So you can see the bisector in this case, if angle A, B, D, and angle C, B, D, are equal, then we can say BD is the bisector. So BD bisects the angle ABC such that angle ABD becomes equal to the angle CBD. Right. I hope with that you were able to revise and recap. Now can you do the task which has been given in your lesson plan? Complete that task as part of revision. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day.